Alright, uh, I figured I'd go ahead and show off my Altergeist deck profile. I don't upload much to this channel, but I figured I'd at least show off something every now and then. Uh, this is the build that I did the most extensive amount of work, especially uh, in Lawton before my move to Midwest City. Uh, competed in three OTS events, got top 10, top 6, and kind of bombed out of the last event I did with it, which is one of the reasons, that multi-figure is one of the reasons why I kind of stopped playing. The only reason why I bombed out though was because my uh, mom had passed away and everybody was pushing me to play uh, to kind of not dwell on it and get my mind off of it, but the fact was my mom just passed away. I couldn't think of anything else, so of course I was making a lot of mistakes and I just wasn't able to focus like I should. So let me go ahead and show off the deck. It's a pretty good build that's gone through some changes since Multipakers hit, but let me know what you think. Of course, you got your standard one Concori, standard play, three Multifaker, or not Multifaker, I wish, three Marionette. Uh, Concori is your attack stopper slash negator. If you control an Altergeist card, it can special summon itself if an attack is declared, negating the attack, and then you could target a card on the field and negate its effects whenever it's special summoned. Uh, Multifaker, or why do I keep wanting to say multi-picker? Sorry. Marionette, when normal summoned, will set an Altergeist trap from deck. And you can target an Altergeist into grave, send an Altergeist card you control to the grave to uh, special summon it. Um, then you got the one multi-picker. Not by choice. If a trap's activated, you special summon her. Then she, when she special summons, she can special summon an uh, Altergeist from deck, but you're locked into Altergeist for the turn. Uh, in defense mode, my knight. Uh, two cell quitus, standard, uh, standard play. Um, once per turn, you can target another altergeist. It's a quick effect. Bounce it back to hand. Altergeist card, my I had. Bounce it back to hand to bounce a card your opponent controls back to hand. Uh, you cannot bounce yourself back to hand, but you can bounce another altergeist card back to hand uh, to bounce. Usually, multi faker to bounce an opponent's card. And if it's if she's sent from the field to the grave, you get to add an altergeist trap back to hand. Uh, three mil you seek. Uh, she can attack directly if she inflicts battle damage. She gets to search. Uh, she gets to target one card on the field and send it to the grave. Send, not destroy. And uh, she can attack directly. Keep that in mind. And if she's sent from the field to the grave uh, for any reason, same as Soquitas, uh, though she'll get to search an Altergeist monster from deck to hand. She's kind of your rota of the deck. You'll normally send her off the field via um, Link Karibo with her being a level one. Uh, then I do a smaller hand trap lineup. I do two ash because I hate breaking with two. Uh, two in opening hand, let me rephrase that. So I don't want to run three since it's once per turn. Two DD Crow because I find that card to be really good this time around. Uh, Salomon Greats, Orcish, you name it. And I'm too broke to him for a uh, to permanence. So two effect whaler. Duelist Saga, my favorite rarity. Um... Obviously, you know what these do. Ash stops searching, special summoning from deck, yada yada. Crow banishes a card from the grave, quick effect, and Valor negates a uh, monster effect on the opponent's field during their turn. I got lucky, thanks to my ex-girlfriend. She helped me get these two cards. Two, Pot of Extravagance. Got lucky, pulled them, did not buy them, did not trade for them. Um, this card lets you banish three to six random cards from your extra deck face down. They are random, though, uh, and they have to be extra deck cards, not pendulums. And then you get to draw one card for every three banished. Uh, I only run two because I only have two. Uh, but this is your main draw power of the deck. Two Super Poly. Uh, obviously, discard a card. Fuse, uh, usually on your opponent's turn. You don't really use the extra deck that often, except for, like, Hexty and, like, Link Karibo, so it's not that big of a deal. On the traps. Two Protocol. Protocol says, while it's face up on the field, Altergeist cards you control cannot have their monster effects... Well, actually, cannot have their effects negated. Sorry, very dehydrated. Cannot have their monster effects negated. So, if you have an Altergeist card on the field and they go to activate their effects, someone ashes them, this is face up. Oh, well, still goes off. Even Skill Drain could be up while this is on. And their effects will go off. But only their activating effects, not their continuous effects, will go off. 
plus once per turn if a monster effect is activated on your opponent's side of the field you can tribute an altergeist monster you control to negate and destroy that card um and it doesn't matter where the monster effect activates hand deck field grave wherever you can tribute an altergeist boop, and negate that effect keep in mind uh Mel you seek can get a search off of that and so critters can recover a trap including protocol you run uh i run two manifestations most people only run one i run two because i like seeing it early on i'll explain why at the end manifestation is basically a kind of back to the front of the deck it's a normal trap you activate it it resurrects an altergeist in your grave special summons them in attack mode and then equips and uh also while it's in the grave you can uh, ba uh banish this card i believe and never ever use this one again you can also, the second effect of this is you can banish this card from your grave, then target another Altergeist card and add it to your hand. I never use that effect, but mostly you use the Call of the Haunted effect. The combo here is you will usually resurrect Silquitus, then bounce it back to hand, and then Silquitus will, of course, because it's equipped, it die, but get to bounce an opponent's card back to hand. And it basically turns it into a once per turn Kapulse. One of the best combos of the deck. And if uh, this card leaves the field before it has a chance, like before the monster is fully special summoned, it will not um, it will not have a chance to equip. Therefore, uh, the monster that would be special summoned is still special summoned, but this card can leave the field and there's no downfall. The monster will not be destroyed. Uh, it has to fully be equipped into the monster, then leave the field for that monster to be destroyed. Personal spoofing, you have to run three with multi-faker down to uh, one now. Uh, let me centralize that a little, okay. Personal spoofing allows you once per turn to take an Altergeist card in your hand or on the field and uh, shuffle it into the deck and add an Altergeist card from your deck to your hand. Uh, monster, Altergeist monster from your deck to your hand. This lets you get to multi-faker quicker. I then run outside of Altergeist cards. Keep in mind this is not an Altergeist card by name, so it is not searchable due to Marionetter. Uh, I run uh, two Compulse, bounce a monster back, two Lost Win, uh, negate a special summon monster's uh, effect and have their attack and defense permanently. Oh, well, just attack, sorry, permanently. And if they summon, if your opponent summons from the extra deck, you get to reset the card, but banish it when it leaves the field. I run these four normal traps and the two manifestations because I run two trap trick. I can banish a normal trap from a deck to set a trap of the same name onto my field and activate it that turn, but that's the last trap I can activate for the turn. Uh, I run this because getting to manifestation so Quidditch is really good, or basically this trap trick could become a lost one or compulse whenever I need it. Then main deck wise, I also run Three Solemn Judgments, negate anything, half my life points. Three Solemn Strike, negate a monster effect or a special summon, 1500. Negate a special summon or a card that special summons. 2000 life points. For the extra deck, it doesn't really matter. The only cards you really care about, one All Mirage, one Claire and Rushka, three Link Karibos, three Hextia. Link Karibo and uh, uh, Link Karibo, Armourage, and Claren Rushka are just to get Mel you seek off the field so you can get the search. Link Karibo, of course, can do battle tricks, you know that. Armourage kind of can do some protection effects. Uh, you run so many because of Pot of Extravagance. Hextia uh, takes two Altergeists to make, uh, it gains the attack of the Altergeist it points to. Um, and if a spell trap or its effects, meaning if it's face up and they activate its effects, was to activate, you can tribute it, uh, an altergeist it points to, to negate the activation and destroy that card. Plus, if she leaves the field and is sent to the grave, you can search any altergeist card from deck to hand. Spell trap, monster. Well, they don't have spells, but trap or monster from deck to hand. And this is like one of your best lockdowns. This is your spell and trap control card. Then you run super poly targets. Uh, we run one of the Predaplant cards. It is 
the new Predaplant monster, the Trypto, whatever the hell it's called, requires three darks. I run uh, one Thunder Dragon Colossus, one Diplex Chimera in case you go against a Cyber deck that is not Salomon Great. Salomon Great Violet Chimera, two Starving Venom, and one Predaplant Dragostophia. Those are all super poly targets. For the side deck, two, three Artifact Lancia, uh, you know, tribute it during your uh, opponent's turn to prevent banishing. Uh, normally you're going to cite out uh, cards like DD Crow for this. This is to, you know, stop Orcus and things like that. One DD Crow, one Effect Veiler, because certain decks DD Crow really helps on. And you might want to run a third, or Effect Negation can be really good. Want to run a third. Three Secret Village. All your stuff is spellcasters. You get a spellcaster on this on the field. This basically says if you control a spellcaster and your opponent don't, uh, they can't activate spell cards. But if they control a spellcaster and you don't, well, if you control no spellcaster monsters, you can't activate spell cards. But you don't really have enough spells to matter, so you get this out, boom, you're good to go. Two Twin Twisters, because sometimes if you're going second, you need to break those boards. Three Evenly Matches, just to clear those fields. And two Dust Trinitas, which can be searchable off of Trap Tricks to pop the back row. During your opponent's turn, since you can't activate uh, your battle phase, the turn you do that. Uh, and that's my deck. Let me know what you think. Uh, so far, it's done pretty good, and I hope you all like. Uh, please, le again, let me know what you think. Comment, rate, subscribe. And until next time, peace out. Rock on.